Welcome to this module of Kata Coach Training entitled Coaching to Understand Variation. We'll learn that a first step to improving our process is to see and to be able to express how much variation that process experiences. All types of processes experience variation in performance and outcome. Understanding how much and why that variation occurs is the starting point. This training is based on information found in the Improvement Kata and Coaching Kata Practice Guide authored by Mike Palada. You can find that URL and other Toyota Kata references at the end of this training presentation. Let's get started with the lesson. As you can see, here we have a bunch of data points plotted on a graph. Reading left to right, each data point indicates one occurrence of an action, outcome, or characteristic of a process. The numbers on the left or the vertical axis of the graph indicate the quantity of or the length of or intensity of the event that was measured. For example, the points could represent how many errors occurred at a process step each hour a day. As an alternative, each point could represent how many minutes it took to complete a transaction at a computer each time a check was made. The difference in height on the graph is an indication of the measurement seen on the left axis. Just looking at the dots plotted with what information you have, what can you tell me about this process? Is it stable? Is it out of control? Is it necessary to make changes to the process at this time to achieve our goals? Obviously, we need more information to answer these questions. Let's add some information. First, it might be easier to understand that the data points are sequential if we connect them with lines so that it is evident when we read the graph from left to right. We see that the information becomes a little more readable. We think we can see some trends, but we don't know whether this process is running the way it should, whether it is meeting expectations. When we're plotting machine or exit cycle times to see if we can meet customer demand, or in other words, produce parts at the rate at which the customer buys them, we use a calculation called tack time. Simply put, tack time is the rate at which individual parts or service units must exit the process to meet customer demand. It is normally expressed as seconds between each part. Thus, a 12.8 second tack time means that a part needs to exit the process or a task needs to be completed every 12.8 seconds. This gives us the information important goal that we can measure each process step by. We indicate the tack time by drawing a solid red line across the graph. The data can then be compared to the red tack time line. One thing to remember though, it represents the rate at which product must exit the process to meet customer demand. But it doesn't take into consideration the variation we might see in the process when there are interruptions in production loss of product due to defects, or variation in the speed which either the machine cycles or the individuals tending the operation work. We can multiply the tack time by a percentage which will accomplish this for us. We call the resulting number the planned cycle time. It represents the rate the process must produce at that takes all of these variables into consideration. You can see in the box above that we have calculated the planned cycle time for this process by 80%. That results in a 10.2 seconds planned cycle time. We represent that requirement by drawing a green dashed line across the graph. Please note that we label both the tack time and the planned cycle time lines to the left of the graph so that they are evident and one can see the numeric value quickly. With this visual information on the graph, what does this tell us? Please pause to discuss among your group what you can see and the assumptions that you can make. Continue when you have completed the discussion. Great. Now that you're back, one thing that we know is that with all of these red data points above and therefore not meeting planned cycle time, we won't be able to produce fast enough to meet customer demand. What can we do? One thing we know is that even if we do somehow get our cycle time quicker, and therefore lower on the graph, 
Given the amount of variation we have in the cycles, we won't produce fast enough to meet customer demand. A tempting assumption to make is that the process will produce on average to meet customer demand. This is a dangerous assumption because using averages can cause us to neglect or ignore the reasons for the variation itself, many of which can cause enough interruptions and inconsistency in the process that they do more damage than just reduce throughput. It's always better to depict the true variations, compare them to the planned cycle time, and deal with them. What do we need to do first? Yes, you've probably made the same conclusion. We must reduce variation. Only by first addressing and reducing the variation in the process do we lay the foundation for significant improvement. If we're going to first reduce variation, we must have a way to measure the amount of variation we are experiencing. This will help us to see what we currently have and what we need to achieve our goals, and eventually measure progress towards that goal. We're going to learn about a simple and highly visual way of measuring and depicting variation, as well as of identifying a good estimate of what the potential performance level of the process is. We'll call this method the lowest repeatable method for measuring of variation. The first thing we'll do is place a ruler horizontally on the bottom of our graph, parallel to the planned cycle timeline, and slowly move it upwards through the data points, noting the number of data points that are close to or fall directly upon the upper edge of the ruler. The goal is to identify the lowest position of the ruler in which approximately five or six data points fall on or close to the edge. In our example, you see that the ruler gets to the 14-second level before six points fall on its edge. This level becomes our lowest repeatable. The lowest repeatable is that level of cycle times in which enough cycles are repeated to indicate that if we reduce variation in the process, we could most likely operate at that rate consistently. We recognize that this is just a rough estimate, but it does give us a valid starting point for our analysis. To represent this piece of the puzzle, Draw a small line to the right of the daddle, level with the top of the ruler. Then draw a rectangle from that short line, extending downward to the x-axis of the graph. We call this the candle. The top of the candle represents the lowest repeatable. It's our estimate of the level at which the process is capable of performing. Now we need to turn our attention to depicting the variation in the cycle times of the process in such a way that we can compare it to the lowest repeatable. We have a candle. Now we'll have to add a candle wick that will give us our comparison. To create the candle wick, find the highest data point on the graph and move directly to the right over the candle at that point. Make a short mark at that level over the candle. This becomes the top of the candle wick. Next, do the same for the lowest data point on the graph. The level of the lowest point becomes the bottom of the candle wick. Connect both top and bottom lines with the vertical line, and thus you see you have a candle, and then you have a candle wick that extends both above and below the lowest repeatable. Now we have a visual representation of the variation, but it isn't a number. This candle wick visually represents the range of positive and negative variation experienced with the process. Note that it is easy to visually see how the amount of variation compares to the fine cycle point as well as how much positive versus negative variation there is, all compared to the planned cycle. But a number would be of more value to our continuous improvement efforts. So let's calculate how much variation the candle width represents. The top of the candle represents the lowest repeatable point at which we can produce, and the top of the wick represents the positive variation above planned cycle time. It would be helpful to know how big the positive variation is compared to planned cycle time. We can put a number to that variation using the following equation. This equation creates a ratio between the positive variation and the planned cycle time. First, we calculate positive variation by subtracting planned cycle time from the highest point. We then divide the resulting positive variation number by planned cycle time. That resulting number multiplied by 100 expresses positive variation 
as a percentage of planned cycle time. Then we simply plug the numbers from our graph into the equation and work the math. For our example, the resulting number tells us that the highest positive variation we see in the process is 105% of the planned cycle time. Positive variation is the longest cycle time that we will see in the process if our data is representative of how the process runs normally. Expressing this variation in terms of planned cycle time, then, gives us an idea of how likely it will be to see cycle times that meet our needs. We can calculate the percentage of negative variation using a similar equation. The portion of the candle wick below the planned cycle time is negative variation. This means that our process will produce at shorter cycle times than is needed within this range. We calculate this negative variation with the equation seen here. Again, by plugging the numbers from our graph into the equation, we calculate that our process will most likely see some cycle times that range down to a negative 21.5% of planned cycle time. How do we read this and what does it mean? Or what does it tell us about our process? You might say, our lowest repeatable cycle time is 14 seconds with a positive variation of 105% of planned cycle time and a negative variation of 21.5% of planned cycle time. How does this help us? We now have a numeric description of our current variation compared to planned cycle time. Remember when we said that we needed to reduce variation? If we work towards reducing the variation seen in the process, could it look like this? This would be the result of work to both reduce variation and to speed up the process. What would that candle and wick have to look like for this target process? Now we can numerically describe the current state of the process and numerically describe what our target condition needs to look like. And we can do the same to track progress along the way. Our target condition process would have to have a lowest repeatable cycle time of 7 seconds with a positive variation of 0% and a negative 68% variation of planned cycle time. Visually, we can see the significant improvement that we will have to make in the process. We can also put hard numbers to those efforts. Now let's take a look at how we can compare the variation in lowest repeatable exit cycle times at several steps in a process. Our process consists of the rough turn, finish turn, through bore, and counter bore operations. As seen with these graphs, we have timed the exit cycle times of the product exiting each of the process steps. We plotted those times on separate graphs for each process step and used the same tact and planned cycle times for each. We then drew the candle and wick for each graph to represent the variation and the lowest repeatable and did the calculations for positive and negative percent variation. Next, we transferred each of these candles and wicks to a summary graph. This is our present condition summary sheet. From this, we can decide what our target condition candles and wicks would need to look like to accomplish our goals with the process. We draw those on a different graph entitled Target Condition Summary Sheet. Through this process, we have measured and depicted our current condition and developed what our target condition needs to look like. Now it's time for you to try for yourself.